Hello, happy Saturday. Thank you for coming back to my channel. I am so happy you're here because I get to finally announce the finished Hey You Pikachu shadow box. I am so excited. I worked so hard on this thing. Hello. <laughs> I hope you guys like it because I am in love with it, okay? And um, let's just talk about it, I guess. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I spent um, right after the first recording, the part one video, I spent like a day or two painting one of the side panels. And then I put it away. And I didn't touch it for forever. It's been months and I finally decided I'm going to pick it back up and I knocked it out in like a week between the other side panel and the logo and waiting for glue to dry and filming. <laughs> so I'm just really, really proud of it. And yeah, I'm so excited to show it off. So I'm going to talk about the uh, logo first. So, well, I ended up filming it in a different order from the way I'm editing it for starters I guess let's just talk about that so like normally when I'm editing my videos I do it all in chronological order because I want you guys to see the um, the process in the way that I'm doing it naturally uh, but in this instance I am just so incredibly proud of the logo that I wanted to show it off first so there's that. I guess it really doesn't matter. Like it doesn't really matter like in what order you guys watch these clips. Like y'all don't know, but but I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyways, um now I ended up finding the reference photo on Google and I printed it off on copying paper at work. I tried to print it to size. I was afraid it was going to be way too big, but it ended up working out perfectly. Thank you. Um, now, a lot of artists, they use light boxes to transfer their artwork from one thing to another. Some people use transfer paper. Um, I don't like to use transfer paper because I am not graceful at all, and it feels like um, very light uh, oh, Christmas packaging tissue paper. You know what I mean? I feel like... I'm going to rip it <laughs> so I don't uh, I don't ever mess with it uh, maybe one day I will practice a graceful hand but not today so uh, and I don't have a light box so what I do instead is I use my window any window that the Sun is shining through that's a light box and it's free <laughs> so I put my reference that I printed out on the window and I put my watercolor paper that I was going to be painting on over that and I just lightly traced the, uh, the image. Boom. Transferred. Easy peasy, right? Then I pulled my reference photo up on my computer so I could see the colors and then I just matched the colors as well as I could. And it was really nice. Like, I, I think it turned out so good. And I've been practicing with trying to blend using acrylics because it's kind of hard because acrylics dry really quickly. And uh, you have to kind of wet on wet it, you know what I mean? So the process that I've tried doing is getting my block colors down. Like, so either A, you can blend as you paint, which I did with the letter P and the letter I. I. But then once I got to the K all the way down to the microphone at the end, I was like, okay, look, I'm not doing one letter blending through at a time. It's taking too long. So I just blocked out my colors. Yellow, orange, red. Boom, 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 boom. All the way across. And then I went back and then I did the wet on wet. So I grabbed more orange and grabbed more yellow and I blend it. And uh, well, technically I was blending from bottom to the top because they're a darker color. So red than orange blend that together then yellow and orange blend that together you know what I mean and I found one process that worked really good was using one brush to get the colors in 
using a dry brush right across the seam to blend them together. So I was kind of alternating brushes and just experimenting and I think it turned out okay. Like it, it worked very well and once you get like a little flow going, a little rhythm going, it just kind of goes boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, you've been painting a logo for three and a half hours and it's just time flies by when you're having fun, you know what I mean? <laughs> I did allow myself to take like two different breaks during this uh, whole process. So technically it took like four hours or five, four and a half hours, something like that because of all the, the breaks. Cause I was watching like zero live stream and stuff. So I kept stopping to like to chat. <laughs> but as far as like from start to finish about three and a half hours what it took to paint this whole logo. <laughs> um, and there were two different logos that I saw online. One was a flat logo and the other was a more 3D kind of logo. And I sent the 3D logo to myself. And I'm at first I was like, well, I'm just going to paint this blue, just flat blue and just leave it alone because I'm lazy. But then I got to looking at it and it looked really cool. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's go. So I, uh, I, started, I started painting the edges with the shadows and then like the lighter mid-tone shadows and then the highlights and it's coming along it's looking really good and I was like man I'm so proud of me I was so afraid I was gonna mess it up and then have to start all over or something or have to worry about trying to hide my mistakes but uh, it, it, it looked okay and I was really proud you know it's something you just got to take your time and I know this video is sped up but the reality is is I was painting really really slow because I didn't want to mess up <laughs> so yeah painting takes time this whole thing this whole thing takes days and days to make and I guess I could knock the whole thing out in like a week straight if I was just non-stop working on it but you know I got other things so you know there's in between like my, my projects are spread so far apart because you know I'll work on something and then I'll put it away for forever and then pick it back up and then hyper fixate on it and if I don't finish it all in one hyper fixated setting put it away forget about it again <laughs> luckily luckily this one uh a week <laughs> and so the next panel uh, I chose to do the scene where Bulbasaur needs the ingredients and Pikachu's gotta go get them and so he's holding like a vegetable over his head it's not really holding it over his head, though I think the use of vines would have made sense in this uh, situation. But really, it's just floating. It's he, Bulbasaur's got like anti-gravity magic powers on his noggin because it's just <laughs> doing its thing. <laughs> and Pikachu's over there. Okay, so here's the thing. So this old Nintendo 64 game, right? Pikachu is supposed to be sitting with his knees out on his legs and holding the paper on his knees and it was really hard to translate that because it already looks kind of stupid and it was hard to translate that in my painting and not make it look as stupid you know what I mean because if you're looking at this thing like his legs are way out there like there's just there really is no knee his leg is just way out so I'm just like this looks kind of dumb <laughs> but this is the image I chose so I have to work with what I have so my Pikachu looks short and squatty and dumb <laughs> the Pikachu on the other side of the panel looks so so much better and I like that one a whole lot more but the overall scene I painted I had to you know, because this is a horizontal scene, so I had to try to do my best to catty quarter it so that you're looking from a from the back to, or well, from the behind the Bulbasaur rather than from the side profile to the front of Pikachu rather than a three quarters view. And then I moved a few things around in the background to just make the whole scene work because I'm fitting what would be a sideways rectangle into a long, skinny vertical rectangle. So that's kind of a challenge, you know, but I think I think it looks all right. And I like the colors. It's very like autumn and fall themed, you know. And then on the other panel is the beach scene. So we got fall and we got summer and um, I love it. I chose the scene with Butterfree and Pikachu has to. Um, oh, my gosh. Pikachu has to play the pinata game with the Butterfree on the. Lagoon Beach or something and there's like a Venusaur over there, but I didn't paint the Venusaur 
I just painted the scene where Pikachu is like super duper proud of himself for busting open that uh, pinata, and he's just like, you know, he <laughs> look at me, <laughs> and um, this this was filmed vertically, so I filmed the first two the first two clips with my camera on my tripod, so it's horizontal. But this one's filmed vertically because I filmed it on my phone. This was actually the very first clip that I filmed for this video. And I had this bright idea that I would take my phone, turn the camera on, and then shove it down into my cleavage so that it would hold the phone up for me. And then I can use both of my hands freely to paint. However, I was breathing. <laughs> so the phone is going up and down. And so the camera ends up being shaky. And I was like, well, that didn't work out, did it? That's kind of stupid. <laughs> but I tried really hard to, like, cut a lot of the shakiness out and just uh, get to the point. And I didn't film a lot of it anyways. Um, the stable camera on the tripod, those look so much better. And the, any shakiness is coming from me sh moving and holding the the box. So, yeah. Um, and in order to get the logo on the top of the box, I had used popsicle sticks and I cut them and then I took one popsicle stick, cut it in half and cut these slits into it and shoved my flattened out popsicle sticks into those slits and glued it all down. That took a whole day for that to cure. Um, uh, but yeah, overall, I think it looks fantastic. And I, and then I took it outside in the nice pretty sun and took some nice ending little video clips of the whole thing and all of the sides and I added these fun little vines in the inside of the box to add some depth and some like three dimension you know what I mean so you can like put your hand in there and I don't, I don't know <laughs> I tried to stick my hand up in there to like show you guys and then I jerked the box so I was like oops <laughs> So yeah, I'm just overall, I'm really proud of this whole process and I'm glad I got to share it with you guys and I hope that y'all enjoyed um, the video, the artwork, um, I hope you're inspired to make your own shadow boxes and if you do, follow me on Instagram and tag me and I, and I would love to see what you create. So yeah, y'all have a great day, God bless you guys, see you on the next one, bye!